as Canada's most accomplished astronaut, Chris Hadfield has gone farther and faster than almost anyone in the world. He's flown two shuttle missions, been the voice of mission control, and has even lived underwater for two weeks as part of his elite space training. Now, at 52, Hadfield is about to set another milestone. And as he prepares for that venture, we wanted to get to know the Canadian rocket man, who, as Paul Johnson discovered, has his feet firmly planted on the ground. Have a good mission, and we'll see you back here in about eight days. Roger yeah, that. Thanks so much, sir. We sure appreciate the help. You have a clearance log. This man is counting down to the adventure of a lifetime. And he's a guy who's had an adventure or two already. I have been one of the luckiest guys on Earth. But a lot of Chris Hadfield's luck hasn't been on Earth at all. In fact, you could say it's been out of this world. Go for main engine start. One and lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis with the Russian docking launch. They have the whole world rolling by outside your window, where you can see every place on Earth. That that's a pretty special thing to see. I'm Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield. I have the incredible privilege of flying in space, not once, not twice, but three times. Chris Hadfield has piloted the fastest planes, flown on two space shuttle missions, and the first Canadian to walk in space. Now, this country's most accomplished astronaut is preparing for his most challenging job yet. Give me a high five, Chris. In March 2013, Chris Hadfield will be the first Canadian to command the International Space Station. And one question that everybody has asked is, how's the guy going to get a beer up there? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a long time uh, without a lot of the normal things that, that make life interesting and relaxed and fun. do something really complicated that you've trained most of your whole life for and to do it well and to do it successfully and to be trusted to do it uh, there's a great pride and satisfaction in that so there's pleasure in all those things and a beer can wait six months Chris's next mission puts him in a very select group of space voyagers Point oh five. What are you going to do when you're there, and what are you thinking about? All the things that can fail. A fire in the spaceship. A fire in a spaceship is an awful thing. Or if we get hit by a meteorite and there's a, a sudden dramatic leak or a contaminated atmosphere. Normally, it's a very flat command. Pedals free, executing opening right. But when things go bad, that's when everyone needs one leader to say, this is what we're doing now. This is what we're doing next. And this is how we're going to save our life or save the station or save the program. Living on the International Space Station and commanding a spaceship. It is a dream come true for me, something I dreamed about since I was uh, nine years old. But Chris has done a lot more than dream since the day he watched a man walk on the moon. That's one small step for man. I've been an astronaut for almost 20 years and I've worked up through a lot of different jobs. A few of those jobs include U.S. Navy Test Pilot of the Year in 1991 and flying the first CF-18 intercept of a Soviet bomber as a NORAD pilot in the days of the Cold War. When 
the horn went off, we scrambled the airborne within 12 minutes from a dead sleep to be in an F-18 and airborne and headed out off the coast and then to get out there and intercept the Soviet bombers before they could get close enough, fly up in the dark of night, up behind them, and then come up on their wing with my baby finger, turn on this enormous light on the side of the CF-18 and identify exactly what type it was, what their purpose was. Atlantis, Houston, good morning. Time to wake up and do the right stuff today with that docking module. Four inches, now. We have captured. A decade later, Chris was in Earth orbit, shaking hands with his former enemy when he docked with the Russian Mir space station in a friendship mission. The shining example of international cooperation and success is the International Space Station. It flies in the face of history, and it flies in the face of a lot of very recent enmities, but at the same time, it flies, and we're doing this thing together. And most of all, seeing and working with friends has been an experience that none of us uh, will ever forget. And from the edge of our seats on the ground, we will be with you as our proud heritage unfolds our future to Chris and Canada's place in space. Then there was the moment 10 years ago when he stepped out free floating into space for the first time. You are holding on to a human creation, the spaceship, with one hand. And when you look to your right, there's the whole universe just right there, going on forever. And when you look to your left, the whole world is just pouring by next to you. I found it stupefying. I found it dumbfounding. Just the inherent beauty of it, the velvet, bottomless bucket of the universe and the textures and the rainbow colors, just like this wonderful exploding kaleidoscope next to you all the time. And you're alone in the middle of that. And your only link to the other six billion people and all of history and all of beauty and poetry and everything that is human is linked in one hand. It's the need to understand that infinite beauty that brings Chris and his fellow astronauts out into space. I'm pushing power on. Okay. The, the purpose of being up there is, is the exploration and the science, the hundreds of experiments that are on board, the gathering of dark matter and dark energy from the universe and the alpha magnetic spectrometer. That is why we built the space station. But we didn't just put robots on board, we have people. Look how close that thing is. That sucker is, is right there. <laughs> Good Lord. Did we really do this? <laughs> <laughs> nice job. Good job, man. Hey, well done, Well done. Hey, nice job. In just 15 months, Chris Hadfield will be in charge of those people in space. But before that day comes, even a guy this accomplished has a few things to learn. on 16 by 9. Rockets don't have rear view mirrors. Don't look back. That's not where you're going. This ordinary farm in Milton, Ontario, is where a most extraordinary Canadian grew up. It's where this average couple raised a far from average son. What is the tip for raising an astronaut then? A lot of love and a lot of care and a lot of training. That and one more thing that Roger Hadfield wanted us to see. This 1949 biplane made mostly of wood, wire, and fabric. So I the kids on the wing, but Chris looked up, he said, oh, a golden airplane. At the age of three, in 
this little boy experienced the thrill of leaving the Earth's surface for the first time. Fast forward to July 20th, 1969, and Neil Armstrong's walk on the moon. In an instant, a nine-year-old boy's future was set. That's when he decided to, to himself. He didn't say too much about it, but he thought that'd be a very nice way to make a living. But space exploration can be a hazardous profession. This is Houston, say again, please. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Houston, we've had a problem. In 1970, an onboard explosion almost brought a disastrous end to the Apollo 13 moon mission. Liftoff of the 25th space shuttle mission, and it is cleared. During the space shuttle era, two of the orbiters exploded on missions. Killing all aboard. This is Mission Control Houston. We have no additional word at this time. Do you still worry about your son? No. There's four pilots in my family. I stopped worrying about my men flying a long time ago. They do the very, they, they prepare. There's always a risk. We know that, we accept that. But uh, just the joy of seeing them achieve what they've worked so hard to achieve. No, it, uh, there's no fear there. When he first started, a Canadian couldn't even be an astronaut. And to, uh, to reach the point where we command the space station, it's wor a world recognition of, of Canada. And we'll be extremely proud of his, what, what he's doing. Extremely. His hometown of Milton, Ontario is proud of him too. You can walk down Hadfield Way, relax in Hadfield Park, even send your kids to Chris Hadfield's school. Well, good morning to the students and all the teachers and staff at the Chris Hadfield Public School. This is Chris Hadfield talking to you from the bottom of the ocean. And Chris is in school too intensive training for his next mission. I show us about five meters away and I'm ready to begin when you're ready. I'm ready. Practicing delicate maneuvering needed to control the Canada arm as it snags an unmanned supply ship. Good for you, the okay. okay. Good pleasure, Ray. Crewmate, American Tim Marshburn, is confident that Hadfield good. has good. all the right stuff. Right. Well, first of all, you gotta be technically very good in space flight, and there's no better than Chris. Uh, he's a uh, fighter pilot, test pilot. But on top of that, being very easygoing and being a good person to work with, if you're gonna be cooped up in a can for, uh, with a beautiful view for six months, uh, Chris is the guy you wanna be with. Whoa, we're about to have everybody. Somebody get in front and sit down. And Hatfield is the kind of guy you wanna be with on Earth, too. You're cool. You think so? I'm glad you think so. You're awesome. He's a fellow who gathers a crowd, or in the case of this appearance with the Houston Symphony Orchestra, an audience. Big smoke standing in the morning. But nothing compares to that great gig in the sky. the sky. To be able to play guitar with it floating weightless next to the huge bay window on the bottom of the station, watching the world pour by. A world that keeps on spinning and keeps on changing. My mother was born in 1908. Wilbur and Orville Wright were still flying around, and her grandson goes to a space station. That's one lifetime. Now what our grandchildren will see in their lifetime, who knows? Chris Hadfield doesn't know either, but whatever it is, he knows it'll be worth the ride. Don't look back. That's not where you're going. Yes, accept things that have happened in the past, but pay attention to where you're going in the future and focus on that, because that is your life. Next on 16 by 9, what happens when this guy ah! takes on a wild mob? <laughs> 